Do you ever wonder how the Vikings entertained themselves? So, this is what it was like to have a sexual life in Viking times. The most interesting aspects of the past, like the nature of Viking sex, are often left out of textbooks and classroom discussions. Although we know a lot about Viking burial practices and military tactics, we also know that the Vikings were humans who, from time to time, had to engage in the age-old process of reproduction. This prompts the topic of how the Vikings' sexual practices compared to those of the modern world. Vikings, like many ancient cultures, had a relatively open attitude toward sexuality and sexual behavior. They did not have strict social norms or taboos surrounding sex, and premarital sex and extramarital affairs were not seen as particularly scandalous. Vikings were known to engage in both heterosexual and homosexual relationships, and there is evidence of same-sex partnerships and even marriages among Viking communities. The Vikings were a culture that fully embraced the sensual side of human nature, from their fierce lovemaking to their unusual sexual practices. But don't just take my word for it, come with me as we explore the sultry depths of the Viking bedchamber. Welcome to Hallmark History, as we look at a side of Viking culture from the sacred rituals of Freya, goddess of love and fertility, to the notorious reputation of Viking warriors as lovers. Let's get started with the salacious tales told about Vikings. Women weren't expected to put up with their husband's sexual ineptitude until death do them part, rather, it was seen as a valid ground for dissolving the marriage. A Viking lady may get a divorce and keep her dowry if she found out her spouse was incompatible with her sexually for any reason, including but not limited to his interest in cross-dressing or being gay. It appears that one lady who took advantage of this law justified her actions by saying something to the effect of, he is not able to consummate our marriage so I may enjoy him. Unfortunately, domestic violence has only seldom been considered a valid reason for divorce. Nonetheless. Despite the fact that we commonly regard women's divorce rights to be a more recent development, Viking women were undoubtedly pioneers in this field, and having a satisfying sexual life was a crucial element of living a full life. Although they were forward-thinking in other ways, the Vikings were not as tolerant of singledom as the Romans were. Marriage was considered obligatory for both men and women in Viking society, and those who did not were considered to be fleeing the penis or fleeing the vagina. Any man or woman who left their spouse or future wife at the altar was called one of these insulting names. Surprisingly, this did not lead to widespread condemnation of homosexuality, rather, it meant that Vikings were supposed to settle down, reproduce, and satisfy their bloodlust inside the confines of a marriage. So, while they weren't exactly the champions of LGBT rights and liberties, Vikings were more tolerant of homosexuality than many other societies. Related to that, the Vikings had complicated views on homosexuality. Even if they accept some aspects of homosexuality, such as the existence of lesbians and bisexuals, that doesn't mean they can't also have a prejudice against gay individuals, especially gay men. It all came down to how you were positioned when making love. A man who admittedly loved being penetrated was seen as violating Viking beliefs and showing signs of weakness. Men were allowed to penetrate people of any gender without consequence because of the high regard in which such behavior was held. In fact, being penetrated by another man was illegal, and those who broke the rule were termed ergi as a term of derision. Men who were submissive were looked down upon, while same-sex preferences were tolerated so long as the couple remained married and raising children. Even though it was more socially acceptable for women to be sexually intimate with other women, it was still considered unacceptable for men to engage in sexual acts of gratification against another man. Perhaps the most striking similarity between Viking and modern sexual mores is the use of slang terms over plain speech. It's hard to picture a burly Viking blushing at the mere mention of making love, but that's exactly what happened, and to make up for their shame, they created a whole array of euphemisms to make communication a little easier. Verbs like rolling toward or crowding in bed or even romping on her tummy are examples of this type of behavior. The actual deed was only inferred, as is the case with many common phrases used today. Also on the table was the topic of illicit love visits, a lovely name for couples who wed without their family's consent. The practice of Vikings leaving their partners to find other loves was not widely accepted by Viking society, despite the fact that many Vikings were open to doing so. 
In fact, engaging in extramarital sex as a Viking could have been seen as criminal depending on the parties involved. If a woman committed adultery, her husband could easily divorce her, punish her with a hefty fee, or even kill her. Viking women had the right to divorce their husbands and keep their dowry if they found out their spouse was incompatible with her sexually for any reason. If their partners refused to have intercourse for three consecutive years, but they had no such rights if their spouse cheated on them. One of the few crimes for which a male Viking was ever punished was having sexual relations with another man's wife suggesting that women did not always have the upper hand in Viking society. How do you convey your interest to the person you're in love with? Do you want to sex them in the late hours of the night or invite them out for coffee? However, the Vikings did not have these conveniences, so they had to embark on the path to romantic partnerships through what may seem like a convoluted procedure to us now. You can attempt it if you want, lads, but we're not sure we like your prospects. This also includes the males collecting purple flowers and slapping them about the face of a woman they liked. In order to show their admiration, the women had to spend a lot of time sewing shirts for each male they fancied. A number of Vikings were forerunners of modern metrosexual guys, taking considerable delight in their appearances and participating in a lot of personal grooming. And typical man takes a shower once every week, by the standards of the day this was very often. Women and men alike adorn their appearances with brightly colored hair dye, makeup, jewelry, and well-fitting, well-styled clothing. Fascinatingly, the Vikings had their own criteria for beauty, which included having white arms and long, lustrous hair. With a life expectancy of only 40 years, Viking sex life began considerably earlier than we would consider moral or acceptable. Many girls were married off at the tender age of 12. They had to keep the house running and cook for their military husbands, as per the established gender roles of the time. One of the liberties afforded to Viking women was the inheritance of property, which was unheard of for women at the period, yet they were far from enjoying entirely free lives. Many of these practices may be disturbing to our modern eyes, but it may also surprise you to realize that some rather modern ideas shaped the Vikings' sexual aesthetic. It appears that straight men came out on top often literally, in the event of the death of the Viking chieftain, his men would engage in sexual activity with one of his slave girls. Slaves' wives would be asked, which one of you will die with him? If something happened to their master, every man who was close to or loyal to the deceased chieftain would lie with her when she offered to help. The men would all say to their masters, tell your master I did this only for the love of him, after completing their tasks. By then, she would have put on a cheerful front by singing, dancing, and apparently getting wasted. For the sake of their eternal devotion to one another, the chieftain and his slave girl would be sacrificed and cremated together on the day of the funeral. The TV show portrayed this strange ritual based on a first-hand account written during the Viking Age by the Arab explorer Ibn Fadlan. The Icelandic sagas feature extensive sexual content, both realistic and hilariously outlandish. In one of the most famous episodes of the Brennu Njals saga, a husband is cursed by another character who wants to end their marriage. He refused to sleep with the other woman, so she cursed him so that his penis would grow too big for his poor wife to handle. This caused him and his wife much embarrassment, pain, and frustration. If he were to sleep with anyone besides his wife, his penis would return to its normal size, the curse only applied to his marriage. Women in Viking religion were weird witches and mystics, and the religion was predominantly male and masculine. Modern Norse religion is dominated by male deities like Thor and Odin, and Middle Ages religion depicted women as witches or other socially outcast mystics. Norse pagans valued women prophetesses. They attributed knowledge to Thor, Odin, and Freya. Norse worshipped Freya, goddess of love, fertility, and household success. Viking men's privates were a sore spot for shame and insecurity. Women had the right to legally divorce unsatisfactory men, and stereotypes about impotent and short penized men were common. For a man living in the Viking age, performance and size were important. Media portrayals of Viking sex often contrast with reality, which was much more subdued. Most men preferred to sit in the missionary or doggy style because it highlighted their status as the dominant alpha male. It was possible to have a threesome or an orgy, but it was not common. Sex could be tender and loving between a couple, 
despite the fact that men like to demonstrate their dominance and general manliness. Inconsistencies can be seen in Viking rape laws. While slaves could be raped, shamed, and mistreated as often as their masters pleased, raping a free woman could have severe consequences, including castration. It is my sincere hope that you have gained a better appreciation for the ferocity and intrigue of the Vikings as we conclude our journey into their private lives. This isn't the end of the road, though. Follow my Hallmark History channel for more enticing tales from the past and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We appreciate you taking the time to